I mean, those big issues that you talked about, you know, climate change, sustainability, inclusiveness, I think in your book you talk about bringing stakeholders together rather than short-term um, profit focus uh, or orientation. Um, recently in Singapore there's been a big debate about the need for greater solidarity. Uh, one of our ministers talked about this and he referred to the Arab philosopher Ibn Khaldun and the need for Azebaya, and he also talked about the Italian philosopher uh, Machiavelli and Virtu. And in Chinese philosophy also you have similar things. I, I'd just like to get your thoughts on this because it also resonates with what I saw in your book. Yeah, as a, as a question, as a fundamentalist question is, how do we create welfare? And here, because also to close the gap, um, we, between those who are more fortunate and those who are less fortunate, we have to generate uh, prosperity. Um, so, when, when I look at the philosophies underlying, let's say, the creation of um, prosperity, um, we still use philosophy ideologies which are anchored in the first industrial revolution. So you have capitalism on the one hand, socialism and uh, communism on the other hand. In my opinion, those concepts are old-fashioned. We are living in the fourth industrial revolution. And if we look at the definition of capital, it's not anymore just financial capital. It is um, human capital. It is uh, natural capital, uh, it is social capital. And um, to create welfare, you need all, all of those capitals. So you have to take care of all of those dimensions, new dimensions of capitalism, or more sophisticated uh, dimensions of capitalism. So that's what I define with a stakeholder. Uh, capitalism um, and it's contrary to, uh, to shareholder capitalism where the purpose of a company is just to produce a maximum of profits for the shareholders and um, usually to do so um, short term and not long term. So my argument in the book is that uh, 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 the responsibility of a corporation is um, to take care, of course, of shareholders, but uh, also of its people, of its customers, of, uh, of the community it's living in. And at the end, that's my main argument, and at the end, uh, doing so, shareholders will be well served because when I look now at the pandemic and I look at companies who, um, let's say, weathered the storm very well and performed very well despite the pandemic, those were usually companies who had invested into the long-term vitality of the enterprise, who had sufficient financial reserves, who had the trust of the people, who had the trust of the clients and so on. So um, if a company does not take care of the planet and people, uh, they will have less motivated employees, less loyal customers, and probably more difficulties to get finance in the future. So it's not just, let's say, a new uh, philosophy which I write uh, in order to make companies better and uh, uh, working more for the, for the uh, social good. I think it's um, uh, in the way self-interest of companies to embrace this philosophy because the winds have changed and you are on the wrong side of history if you still, you may survive well for the next uh, three, four, five years, but afterwards, 
the, the change of perception of attitude in the public will be such that you will be punished as a company if you just uh, uh, focus on um, shareholder profit maximization.